Easton. Now, what are your thoughts on the afterlife? You ever think about big questions of life, if there's God or um, if there's an afterlife, if there's heaven or hell, anything like that? I think about whether there is a life after this. You do, right? Yes. Okay. Now, what kind of life? Is it like a heaven and hell or what kind of life? Heaven. Heaven, right? Yeah. Now, um, do you believe in a place of hell, like God would create a place of hell? Yes. Now, why do you think God would create a place of hell? For the sinners. Okay. Now, oh, would you consider yourself a good person? Will you make it to heaven? I would hope so. Okay. Now, you know the Ten Commandments, right? Yeah. Okay. Number nine is we shouldn't lie. How many lies would you say you've told in your whole life? I've lost count. Lost count. Now, what do you call someone who's uh, told so many lies that they've lost count? A pathological liar if you're not careful. <laughs> Just the liar, right? Yeah. It's simply. Now, um, w number eight says we shouldn't take anything that doesn't belong to us. Would you say any time of your life you've taken something that doesn't belong to you? No. Not once in your life? No. Now, you've told me you're a liar. Yeah, but I wouldn't lie about that. <laughs> okay. Um, now, two more. I appreciate your honesty. Now, Jesus said if you look at another person with lust, you commit adultery in your heart. Would you say I've ever looked at another person with lust? Uh, yes. I think we all have, right? Now, uh, that's called adultery in the heart. Now, last one. Would you say I've ever used God's name in vain, like, oh, my G-O-D, J-C, anything like that? No. Not once in your life? No. Not when you were angry and you just stubbed your toe or something and it just flew out of your mouth? I might when I was angry, but other than that, no. Okay, gotcha. Now, um, with your own admission, Miller, right? Yeah. I'm not judging you, but with your own admission, you just told me you're a lying, blasphemous adulterer at heart. That's how God sees you, right? Yeah. So on the day of judgment, if God was to judge you by that standard alone, the Ten Commandments, would you come out innocent or guilty? Probably guilty. Now, uh, would that concern you if God was to find you guilty? Um, would that mean heaven or hell? That would probably mean hell. Now, would this, would, does that concern you? Yes. Now, do you know what God did for guilty sinners so they wouldn't have to go to hell? I forget. You probably remember, but you probably forgotten. So 2,000 years ago, Jesus Christ in the form of God came down and lived on this exact same earth we live on today. You know that, right? For our sins, yeah. Exactly. So we know that part, but this part might change your life. It changed my life. So um, Jesus Christ died on the cross paying our bail. You and I broke God's law, the Ten Commandments. Jesus steps in and pays the fine. Miller, if you're in Harrisonburg Court, and you have a stack of speeding fines. If someone else comes in and pays for those fines, the judge can legally dismiss your case. He can say, Miller, even though you're guilty, someone else paid on your behalf, case is dismissed. Does that make sense? Yes. That is what Christ did on that cross. He pays our bail. He bails us out by paying with his own blood on that cross. Does that make sense? Yes. That's where perfect love and perfect justice meet at the cross. Now, there's two things you must do, Miller, to get everlasting life. Any idea what they are? Uh, keep God's name holy. God's day holy? God's name. Name. Okay. Now, that's well, what we need to do is repent. Old-fashioned word means turn away from sin. So pretty much when we know something is wrong, like keeping God's name holy and all the other commandments, we need to turn away from it. You can't be the hypocrite and be a Christian who still does all the wrong things. A genuine Christian is one who turned away from those things. Does that make sense? Yes. And the last thing we must do, Miller, is trust Jesus like a parachute. Miller, if you're 10,000 feet up in an airplane and you're about to jump out without a parachute and your plan to save yourself is to flap your arms, would that work? No. It wouldn't work, right? No. So my best bet is to say, Miller, see that parachute, put it on. As soon as you put that parachute on, deploy it, you don't need to flap your arms, do you? No. The parachute is saving you entirely. That's what the Bible says. The Bible says, put on the Lord Jesus Christ. Put him on like that parachute, and you don't need to flap your arms. You don't need to try to make your way into heaven. Say, I'm a good person, and I will try to make it into heaven by being a good person. No, we all already broke the commandments. Does that make sense? Yeah. We're all sinners. Yeah. So by God's standard, we all deserve hell. Or just justly, he would have to send us to a place of punishment called hell. Does that make sense? Yeah. At the same time, he's perfectly loving and forgiving, and he dies on the cross, and he pays our bail. There's two things we must do to get everlasting life. Do you remember what they are? Not right off hand. 
It was uh, to repent, remember, to turn away from sin, and to trust Jesus like that parachute. Does that make sense? Yeah. Now, um, Miller, you know, a lot of people die every single day. 150,000 people die every 24 hours. It could be you and I tonight. We never know, right? So all I'm asking you, Miller, would you give this serious thought? Yes. Well, Miller, it's been a great pleasure to speak with you. It's been a pleasure, and I thank you so much for taking the time out of your day to listen to me and listen to the gospel presented to you. Thank you so much. You're welcome.